G'day and welcome to the shed. In part one I pulled this old Echo model U245 radio out of the two hard basket where it had been for quite some time. I put it together with whatever I had lying around and amazingly it actually worked, although not terribly well. I then recapped it and um, checked some voltages and got it working somewhat better. In part two I'll uh, attempt to fix up the cabinet, uh, do an alignment and hopefully put it all back together. I don't know if you can hear me with the rain on the roof but got the, uh, the cabinet, the case out um, and firstly I'll just take the speaker back out of it and, and Try and work out where we go from there. Look at that rain's picking up. What else could we do on a rainy day, hey? Kind of thinking. Oh, it's easing off now. Kind of thinking this uh, cabinet might have been factory painted. I have to do a little bit of research and find out if uh, if Echo did paint their cabinets in the factory. Either way, I'm going to have to do something with uh, with the outside of it. Uh, it's scratched through to the bakelite, so. I kind of think it might look nice with just the Bakelite. Now I did do a few little repairs on the speaker um, using um, a couple of spots of liquid electrical tape. Very good stuff. I just had a couple of tiny insect holes around the edge there and that now seems to move freely, no scraping and no holes. So. I think we'll call that one good. Just put it aside. And now to get the speaker baffle out. Got these little screws which don't seem to match any anything I've got. And they go into the bakelite, so I have to be a little bit careful of them. Probably finger tight now. Yeah, these little things. So I've got the speaker baffle out. Um, this grill cloth just fell off. It's a bit crooked and I don't know if I'll be able to straighten that out. I'd like to get all those lines correct but I'm not sure if I'll be able to. I'm just playing with it a bit. I can pull it long ways but it seems that when it's straight at this end, it's crooked at this end, so I might see if I can find something else, if not I'll just do the best I can with this. Okay, so there's the dial glass. It is plastic, but that's probably a good thing. 
the printing on it with plastic ones is usually pretty robust not like some of the glass ones you get where the, the lettering falls off uh, okay so I'll put that aside and the only other thing is I'll take that handle off the top and then I'll give the whole thing a good bath I think ah oh, look yeah you can see in there overspray and underneath that is Bakelite so someone's given this a cheap spray job um, probably after the factory it uh, doesn't appear overwhelmingly professional so um, I feel justified now in taking it back to Bakelite which is good I noticed when I was cleaning up the cabinet um, I was using methylated spirits to take some of the muck out of the bottom and I noticed it was dissolving the paint so I'm going to go ahead with um, some fine steel wool and methylated spirits and see if I can use that to remove this paint. I don't know what sort of paint it is some sort of acrylic I suppose um, whatever it is it seems to yeah, look at that. This is well I didn't go to Bunnings earlier and buy paint stripper. Looks like there's some discoloration towards the back. Might be from heat. Now thinking about that, the um, dropping resist has put out a lot of heat in this, but uh, I'm not seeing discoloration on the underside of the top, so I'm hopeful that it'll be okay. Uh, looking at the front, the dropping resistors are on the left of the rear so I would expect to see some damage around this area if there is any heat damage. We'll try that next. Look how easily that comes off. Nice when things go easily. It doesn't happen very often. But that looks okay I think. Yeah. Oh well, I'll persevere with this and we'll see how it turns out. I'm polishing the cabinet with uh, metal polish now. Um, this stuff. Uh, which you get from car shops. I, uh, I initially gave it a rub back with um, with cutting compound um, and that brought it up okay. I uh, then tried the next level of cutting compound, a softer cut uh, from the same manufacturer. Uh, this, this here didn't make much difference. So then I thought well probably Metal polish might work better. I uh, reason that Bakelite is harder than paint, and these things are designed to uh, to polish paint. Uh, and the metal polish seems to give quite a nice finish to it. Um, I've done most of the cabinet. I'm just leaving the top for last because I suppose you learn from your mistakes. So if I made any mistakes on the other sides, then uh, I would uh, not repeat them on the top, which is the most visible. These marks here are from the handle and they'll be covered. And polish it off with a nice soft old very warm tea towel.
And that's coming up quite nicely. It's a pretty good shine on it. Not perfect yet. I'm not sure if I might try some Brasso in addition to this. Uh, I'll see if it makes a difference or whether this is as good as it gets. Well, that looks pretty good. I'm going to take it out in the sunlight because we've got a bit of sunlight today and um, see if I can see any spots that need further attention. I will try a little bit of Brasso on it to see if it makes any difference but I strongly suspect that it won't. Uh, and anyway that is that is nice. I tried some Brasso on one half of the top uh, and I think it does make a slight difference so I'm going to do the cabinet over with Brasso as well. I've decided I quite like this Bakelite finish. It's not dark like most Bakelite you get. It's almost milk chocolate colour I suppose and it has quite a lot of swirls in it. Uh, I was looking at this I don't know if you can see that this lighter section at the back here and I thought oh heat damage but I don't think it is. Um, there's a similar thing on the side and even on the bottom uh, there's, there's a lighter section here and streaks going through it. So I'm thinking this is just the natural property of the Bakelite. I've also done a bit of research and I think I was wrong about the, uh, the paint job being an amateur job. Um, these sets apparently were painted from the factory. Um, one uh, uh, blog I saw said that they were uh, they came in white, red and brown. Now if by brown they meant Bakelite then that's a possibility but I suspect that they were all painted at the factory and when I took the paint off the surface wasn't all that wonderful not like previously polished Bakelite uh, it was a little bit rough and I suspect that they left it like that because they were going to paint it anyway so uh, hence the, uh, the work put into polishing it up but I think I will leave it as Bakelite. Um, I quite like the look of it. We'll see how it looks when it's finished with, uh, with the dial and grill cloth in. Um, but I think, yeah, I'm going to leave it like this. Just cutting the grill cloth. Around the front panel. I couldn't get that other grill cloth straight no matter what I did. So I've got this off cut from a grill cloth I bought for a radiogram some time ago. It looks quite good from a distance but I thought it was too garish for up close. It's got this yellow stripe through it or goldy coloured stripe. But for this radio it needs a pretty loud grill cloth. So there we go. Um, I've uh, given the speaker, it's quite see-through, I've given the speaker a coat of flat black just to um, make sure it doesn't show through the grill cloth. Move that side up oh, half a millimetre. Not bad. So this side up half a millimetre. Or well, this side down half a millimetre. That be easier.
Yep, that's that's pretty straight. All right, we'll tighten him up and we'll put the speaker in and see how we go. Hopefully, there'll be no reflection or shadow of the speaker through the glue cloth. That's one thing I don't like is when you put a lot of effort into a cabinet, put a nice grill cloth in it, and you can see the speaker straight through the grill cloth. It seems to rather defeat, defeat the purpose. And there it is, um, not too not too shabby looking. I quite like the look of that. Um, the colour of the cloth blends reasonably well with the case. Uh, I did have some trouble with these tops of these handles. There's some pitting there that I just couldn't get out. But I've done the best I can with it. I've given them a coat of clear lacquer so they won't tarnish so quickly. Okay, before I put it back in its uh, cabinet I'm going to do an alignment and I've got the instructions say to feed 470 kilohertz into the grid of V1 which I've got there. It's a little awkward to get to but it seems to be working. I've got my ancient signal generator set as to 470 kilohertz and my U-Butte Chinese frequency counter confirms 470.42 I might be able to get there No, that's about as good as it's going to get Yeah, that will do uh, So the only thing remaining, I've got a speaker hooked up to it uh, I, oh, I've yet to connect a meter across the speaker terminals but I'll do that in a minute and uh, we'll be all set to align the IFs so I've got my ancient multimeter here and I'm just setting it up just for a reference point Okay, so second IF first and a fraction out of that. Now I'm going to do the top adjustments first because I have to turn the chassis upside down to do the others. the chassis because I don't like handling this while it's uh, out up. Okay, with the set turned over and the second IF first using my highly sophisticated alignment tool which is a slot cut in the top of this little plastic flat screwdriver type alignment screw. It works, don't laugh. not making any difference. 
see what this one does. confident that I got it right. That um, adjustment on the second IF underneath, I presume the underneath the secondary, I don't know, makes no difference at all. Uh, it does, mind you, it does tend to change a little bit in that it interferes with the local oscillator in certain points, so it's doing something. As far as the signal out though, the signal strength out is concerned, it varies very little with any adjustment. So, I don't know, um, I'm new at this, I'm probably doing it all wrong, we'll see. Uh, I've worked out what I was doing wrong before with the um, uh, IF alignment. The uh, shaft I was turning is actually attached to the uh, oscillator trimmer, not the IF can and the adjustment for the IF can is just over here behind it. So that explains why it wasn't making any difference. So I'll go back and do an, a, uh, an IF alignment in a minute. But I've uh, I've got the oscillator, uh, yeah, the, I've got the oscillator trimmer working. And I've got that nicely set on 1200 kilocycles at 250 metres. That's about peak. Well, I've finished the alignment. Um, it doesn't seem to have made a big difference to its performance. Uh, it's still not very sensitive with the ferrite aerial alone, but we are inside a tin shed here and the reception in here is always terrible. So it's hard to really be sure. Uh, in any case, I've soldered in a, a short aerial, which seems to help somewhat. Uh, but I'll try it outside uh, in the kitchen probably and uh, and see how it runs there. Uh, we do get a lot of um, RF interference here unfortunately so um, it's, a, it's a pretty good set that can get rid of that and, uh, and bring in a clear signal here. Anyway, um, I think we're all set to go. There's not much to do. Oh, I must yeah, put this little gadget on here which shows you when it's turned on and that's about it. Um, just shows through the dial except when the switch is in the off position and I guess I might have done that because this set does not have any dial lights so I guess it would make sense to have some kind of indication maybe this was cheaper than a dial light I don't know whatever their reasoning was um, it's uh, uh, it works, I suppose, that's all you can say about it. Uh, so, we have the, the case here. And I'll see how we go. It is a little bit awkward to get in, but not too bad. I've seen a lot worse. I'll just make sure that the, yep, the wave chain switch is in the right place. It's a little bit over to the left. There we go. Knobs in the centre. Uh, speaking of knobs, I'll put them on before I screw in the chassis. That'll stop it falling out at least. Um, let's turn that around to the on position. The knobs, the knobs cleaned up nicely. A uh, little bit of metal polish on the centre. Brought that brass insert up and a good scrub with uh, grease and wax remover. Followed by a little bit of black boot polish. Did wonders for them. So just put that on there. And 
the aim the other thing to do is to hook the speaker wires up. I'll just press them on here. I sold it on the wrong size terminals there for a minute, but no, they're okay. Alright, now the other issue I had with this at the beginning, oh, I do have a back for this of course. Uh, the back's actually in nice condition, I didn't have to do anything to it. And that cord should come out through that. Ooh. Yeah, I'm going to have to bend that a little bit to get the cord through. I have to be very careful with that. But it's got no breaks in it. It's in good nick. Even the little clear plastic window that shows you the serial number is uh, still clear. So that'll sit there nicely uh, in a minute. Now, the other thing I need to do is to um, put it on, uh, put the screws on the bottom of the chassis just upend it over a soft cloth. After all my efforts at polishing I don't want to wreck it. Now it has four screws which attach the chassis to the case and they are contacting the, uh, the potentially live chassis. It isn't actually live but what I've decided to do about that is I've got these little, for the moment, if Apparently it had plastic feet which went over the top of this and covered these screws. I haven't got those, they didn't come with it. A uh, little bit of scratching there. Um, so I'm using these, these little caps that come with, they're usually used for furniture, kitchens, etc. Um, if I put a screw through that, the washer underneath it, and then this little plastic cap goes on top and that will insulate the screws. So that's the best I can come up with at the moment. I may come up with a better option later on, but this at least makes me a bit confident that uh, nothing untoward will happen. Make sure that's in the right position at the, at the front. Where we'll change switch moves freely. Knobs move freely. Okay. So that's that one. rubber feet. Plastic foot. Oh no, it'll just just fit. Lucky. I didn't think of that.
and there we have it. Plug it in and see if it goes bang. up that plane will have gone hopefully it does take a while to warm up this set I suppose it's the uh, the series heater string takes a while to get going but we should hear something soon I'll just put this aerial somewhere where it has half a chance of picking something up yeah here we go at the supermarket and it makes it very very used to bypass censorship and find non-official sources of <laughs> And we might just pick up 6IX. Yep, there it is. It's a weak station, but it's the only one around here that plays music. Now that's full volume. Yeah, I'm kind of, I'm kind of like it. Yeah, so it's not overwhelmingly sensitive. That, that's the big question. I, it probably depends on how much they're going to command in terms of uh, salary for next year if they're to sign a one-year extension. But when you're talking about these people who were flat earthers, I mean, you described one fellow who admitted that he... ...been in high readings, not, not as high as that one we're just discussing now. So that's, that's where horrible. I say it's, uh, you know, what, what price do we put on the problem to an extreme, where they can be... Anyway, that's it. Not great performance. I probably will have a look at uh, the grid bias on that output valve. I went over the uh, the alignment process a number of times. I don't think I can get it any better. Uh, I think perhaps the fact that the ferrite area isn't overwhelmingly well matched to the tuning gang doesn't help. But nevertheless, it's a nice little radio and I will continue to, to uh, work on getting it to perform better because I believe these sets perform quite well um, when, they're, when they were new and it should perform like new. Uh, I'll put the back on later. I just want to do a final check before I do that and I also have to try and dig up uh, one, two, three, four, five flathead screws. I hate putting Phillips heads in these things if I can help it. Um, so we'll leave that for later. So there we have it. Echo model U245 um, according to a radio museum produced from 1956 but I found a date scratched on the inside of the cabinet of this one with some letters and numbers and I think it was 20 couldn't read the second digit, 20 something 1157 so I think this one would have been made in 1957 um, another thing I should note is I have put a 3 pin power cord on it what I've done is connected the earth wire to the uh, the aerial earth that's not the chassis uh, that does seem to uh, improve the, uh, the performance a little bit it cuts out a lot of the, the noise Okay, we'll stop there because I just realised I made a silly mistake. Uh, the aerial wire that I thought I'd attached to the aerial connection, I had actually soldered to the external speaker uh, terminal. Uh, obviously, I was uh, thinking really well at the time. Uh, so I've resoldered back onto the, uh, to the aerial wire and um, we'll see how it goes now. I'm hoping that, uh, that we'll see some improvement. Uh, when it finally warms up. Well, that's pretty, pretty weak. Doesn't take much to be a champion of the chicken. Help keep WA safe and be a safe WA chicken champ. 
Scott, the whole heretics will be here. Father Chris and Wurzel, if you have a question about the spiritual realm, if you have a deep question, if you'd like to uh, scripture, if you have a question about the Quran, if you'd like to ask a question about the Quran, I don't know what that interference is coming from, but it drives me nuts, and it's in every AM radio in the house. Well, what are they referring to here? It's really good fun. The Holy Heretics join now after 6 o'clock. They have a deep theological knowledge, but they also have... Anyway, that's, that's operating from, oh, about a metre of wire uh, inside the uh, this metal shed. Um, what I'm going to do is hook it up to my long line aerial which consists of a piece of there wire strung on. outside the door the over the clothesline. The there we go. That sounds... That sounds better already. Well as you can see the radio has been doing kitchen duty and so far it's been working very well. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll continue to try and improve things as I go. And uh, my next project is going to be this Chrysler Projector Graphic Model 3K40. Uh, at least I think that's the model number. Uh, and that uh, should be up on YouTube in two weeks or so, hopefully. Okay, thank you very much for watching.